Thank you, guys. Good evening, my beautiful God Life family. Um, it's such a privilege for me to share this parable. It's my favorite. But I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let Jesus tell the story. So I'm going to read it. He tells it beautifully. But before I begin to read the story of the prodigal son, I want to give you a little context. So um, it says that the tax collectors and sinners kept ga gathering around to hear Yeshua. And then the leaders, the Pharisees and the Torah teachers kept grumbling. This fellow, they said, welcomes sinners. He even eats with them. So he told them a parable. And the first parable he told is about if you have a hundred sheep and one goes missing, won't you leave the 99 and go after the one that's missing? And when you find it, you put it on your shoulders and you're so full of joy because you found this one sheep that was lost. So you call family, you call friends and you say, come, come celebrate with me. And he says, this is what it's going to be like, or this is what it is like in heaven. For every sinner that repents and turns to God, because he says this, he says, the one that repents causes joy in heaven, causes them to have a party and be full of joy. Instead of the 99 that is righteous, that doesn't need him. How awesome is this? And then he tells another parable, just for in case they didn't understand. It's a woman, she's got 10 silver coins, she loses one coin. She starts to sweep, she turns on the light, she finds the, co the coin. She rejoices, but she doesn't rejoice alone. She goes and calls her friends and family and she says, come and celebrate with me because I found this coin. And he says, the angels in heaven rejoices and is full of joy for every one sinner that comes to him. So I remember when we did the outreaches with overcomers, I always, I, I saw a lot of miracles, lots. Um, there was this one woman, she had a stroke, half her body didn't work. They prayed for her and she was healed. She stood up. It, it was awesome. And I saw many miracles. But the miracle that was always the most beautiful to me was when a sinner came to Jesus and just said, here I am. Let's, let's see where this goes. And when Jesus starts a thing, he will, he will finish it. So that brings me to the story of the prodigal son. So Jesus is telling the stories absolutely back to back. He doesn't even stop. He just goes like another example. And then he said, a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, father, give me my share of the estate. That will be mine. So the father divided the property between them. As soon as he could convert his share into cash, the youngest son left home and went off to a distant country where he squandered his money in reckless living. But after he had spent it all, a severe famine arose throughout that country and he began to feel the pinch. So he went and attached himself to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the Carrot pots the pigs, the pigs were eating, but no one gave him any. At last he came to his senses and said, Any number of my father's hired workers have food to spare, and here I am, starving to death. I'm going to get up and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I no long, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired workers. So he got up and started back to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity. He ran and threw his arms around him and kissed him warmly. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. 
I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But his father said to his slaves, Quick, bring out a rope, the best one, and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet, and bring the calf that has been fattened up and kill it. Let's eat and have a celebration. For this son of mine was dead, but now he's alive again. He was lost but now he has been found. And they began celebrating. Now his oldest son was in the field and he came close to the house. He heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked, what's going on? The servant told him, your brother has come back and your father has slaughtered the calf that was fattened up because he has gotten him back safe and sound. But the oldest son became very angry and refused to go inside. So his father came out and pleaded with him. Look, the son answered, I have worked for you all these years and I've never disobeyed your orders, but you have never even given me a young goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. Yet this son of yours comes who squandered your property with prostitutes and for him you slaughtered the fattened calf. Son, you are always with me, said the father, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate, celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead, but has come, has come back to life. He was lost, but has been found. That a father has to say that to the brother. You know, it's like, whoa. So... When I did Father's Embrace, Jack explained it like this. He called the prodigal son the son of sin. He called the good brother the son of law. And then he said that there was a third son, and he called him the son of love. And he says this was the son that actually wrote the story. He was the son that observed what was going on and wrote the story. And so if we see the mentality of the son of sin was a mentality of I want, give me, I want, give me, the whole time it was all about him. The mentality of the son of law was I obey, I work, I spend hours, I don't take anything of you. And the son of love is I just want to abide in your presence. It's just so awesome in your presence, which is great. But any one of this, if you do only that, if you only take, it will take you away from your father's house. If you only give, you will become so full of pride that you don't even have space in your heart for your own brother. And if you only abide, you're not going to do anything. And the father wants each and every one of his sons to become just like him. So Jesus gave us the perfect recipe to please the father. There's nothing more important to our father than relationships. Relationship with him, relationship with ourselves, relationship with each other. Nothing more important and so in this story, Jesus gives us the recipe to please our Father. And that is, sometimes we take, sometimes we give, sometimes we abide. We just go to the Father. We don't ask for anything. We don't give anything. Father, I'm just here to spend time with you. Nothing is, is more awesome for me. And I think you all who have children feel the same. When your kid just comes to you and, and you think, okay, I'm waiting, what do you want? And it's just, they just want to be with you. They just, they just want you to rub off on them. So if we follow this recipe, we will have healthy, successful lives. Father, thank you that you're a good father. Thank you that even if we move away from you and you see us coming from afar, you run to us 
And even though we want to say, Father, I have sinned against you. I'm not worthy to be called your son. You don't even listen to that. You just go quickly, quickly, bring, bring, restore, restore. Thank you, Father, that you are like that. Thank you that through your son, you've given us the recipe how to be successful. Holy Spirit, thank you that you will remind us every day. Thank you that you will hold the mirror in front of us so that we can see what we are at every given second of every day. Am I taking? Am I giving? Am I abiding? Am I doing all three of those things every day? And not just for you, not just for me, but for everyone that you send into my life. Thank you so much, Father. We love you. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Brilliant. I've learned something tonight. I've never heard of that third son, the son that abides. That's amazing. Think for a moment. Where do you find yourself? Are you the, the person or the child, the son that wants to have and get and get and please, thank you, I want more? Or are you the son that says, well, I'm just always giving, giving. I don't have really a room in my life to love others. I just need to work because I need to please my father. If I let, you know, one minute go past where I didn't serve him, then he's not going to approve. So I don't have time for, for all of this. Or maybe you say, well, I love to just abide and be with him, but I'm not actually active. I don't reach out to anyone. I don't get anything from anybody. I just want to abide. Okay. If, think a little bit, where do you think you find yourself? Okay. Yeah, I, I'll also say, uh, you know, if you write um, a boat now, right, hey, on a sea, <laughs> and you're going, you're supposed to go north, and you go a little bit northeast, then in order to, even if you would turn north at that point, you would still miss your destination. So sometimes you have to go a little bit west, the northwest, just a little bit till you back onto your track again, you can go north again, you know. Um, so sometimes if you are a person that's always serving, God might say, you know what, I want you to abide a little bit and give or, or uh, receive and just take a break on serving just for a month. And then once you're back on track, then you say, okay, now you can bring that balance. You know, so sometimes things has to be unbalanced in the opposite direction. You know, like someone, when they get a diet, eh? they eat a little bit too much. Now you want to lose weight. So you have to eat for a while too little. <laughs> you can't survive the rest of your life not eating enough. But for a little while, you can just so that you can kind of lose a little bit of your weight. And then when you're back to where you need to be, then you can go back to maintenance, like they say. It. You know, you eat now a lifestyle of healthy food, but you don't go over or under. And so just think a little bit about yourself. Um, let's, let's close our eyes and listen to what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. Um, maybe he says, hey, I'm happy with you just like you are. Maybe he says to you, you know what? I really desire for you to spend some time in my presence. Maybe he says to you, you know what? I actually want to bless you. And every time when I bless you, then you just pull away and you don't give me a chance to bless you. I want you to, to receive something. Yeah, so Father, I'm, I'll start with the, the guy that work. So most of the time, I'll probably fall into that category. And so, um, Lord, I want to just repent that I, I don't want to receive anything. I don't have time for my brother or my sister because I've got stuff that I need to do. And I don't build a relationship enough with you. I don't build enough relationship with my, my family around me. And I repent of that. Lord, I realize I need to spend a little bit more time abiding with you and also a little bit more time with my family and loving them. And I need to put myself in a position where I can receive more. You know, but Lord, then I also think of times where it was just literally all about me and my life. What I want, what I want to get out of it. And so, Lord, I want to repent of, of this one thing for myself. And walking in a place where I say, you know what? The center of the universe is me. And it's all about me being happy and successful. And so, Lord, I, I repent of that also. 
and, and I see one or two of you that actually need to say to the Lord, Lord, I rededicate my life to you. And I actually realize about getting saved is not to say, hey, I'm ready to receive what I need to get. Getting saved is actually about giving your life to Jesus. And so, Lord, today I just come my, I mean, what's the biggest gift I can give is myself. So, Lord, I come and I give myself to you. And I say, Jesus, I belong to you. Some of us has been saved for a long time, but you need to give your life to Jesus. So, Jesus, I give you my life, my time, my money, my goals, my ambitions, my dreams. I connect all of who I am with you. And I say, Lord, you're my, my Lord, my Savior. And I thank you that you, just like that Father, come tonight and you put a new mantle on me and you embrace me and you give me shoes and a ring and a staff and you wash me and you have a big celebration because I'm coming back to your kingdom. And so, Lord, I also think about that son of love, that Jesus really had to write the story. And that, that picture of just wanting to, to worship and abide but never want to go out and actually do something. Lord, um, I don't know if there's any or, or uh, a lot of us that are like that, but Lord, we realize, Lord, that you are giving us so that we can be activated to do something for you in your kingdom. And so, Lord, we will take that step of faith to do something. Lord, open up a door for us and we make a commitment. We will be obedient to your leading. Amen. Amen.